Marilyn Vanson. Please remain standing as I now call on Senator Pastor Ashley Rock for the invocation. It is a privilege for me to be here today in such a wonderful experience of young people talking about issues that are very relevant to us and will be relevant, I suppose, in the next two, three decades. As we bow our hearts before God, we ask him to guide us, that we'll have uh, amicable and peaceful discussion. And when we leave here, we'll leave here in one piece. <laughs> Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, you who created all men and all things, we give you thanks today for another chance as your creation to talk to each other and to talk with each other. We talk particularly, Father, on issues that are so pertinent and so real to our society. We ask that your spirit will give us wisdom, will give us fortitude, will allow us the opportunity to garner for our own selves our own position as we talk about this issue of decriminalization of marijuana. Thank you for the Social Security Board who takes on such a very grand initiative to bring this to the fore. We ask that you will lead us. We pray for our judges, 
all those who will be tabulating. We pray, O oh God, that this will be a wonderful, unique experience once more. Bless this time. Bless us as we do this. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator, you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, as we said at the start, we are here for the finals of the Social Security Board Debate Competition 2016. This is the finals. Put your hands together for the Belize Social Security Board. And a round of applause for Corozal Junior College. Another round of applause for Ecumenical Junior College. You know, this, this started some months ago. There were many teams, many topics over the last few months. The debates were spirited, and we expect more of the same for today. So we're not going to delay in getting to that debate. But before we get there, I must call on the Chief Executive Officer for Belize Social Security, Mr. Richard Flowers, for the keynote address. A round of applause. Good morning. Our moderator, Dr. Leroy Alvindares, distinguished judges, tabulator, timekeepers, participating debaters and coaches, SSB Board of Directors, staff, and invited guests, Welcome. We are delighted to have you here to participate in the finals of the first national debate competition sponsored by the Social Security Board. Last year, a regional debate competition was held and there were four participants. This was such a success that we dialogued with the Association of Tertiary Level Institutions of Belize at LIB and agreed to sponsor a national debate competition comprising of 10 participants with four rounds of competition. A preliminary round, a round for the Western region which had four participants, a semi-final round, and today the grand finale to determine who, which institution will be awarded the top prize. This initiative is one that I am very proud to have SSB associated with. The importance of debate should never be undervalued. First and foremost, debate is an educational endeavor since it uses an argumentative perspective in examining problems and communicating with people. In doing my research, I read a white paper which described debate as a uniquely beneficial educational tool, in part because of the value of the argumentation theory itself. It went on to say that the creation of an argument is one of the most complex cognitive acts that a person can engage in. Creating an argument requires the research of issues, organization of data, analysis of data, synthesization of different kinds of data, and an evaluation of the information with respect to which conclusion it may point. After this process, the formulation of an argument requires the debater to consider differing methods of critiquing reason, the decision-making formula, the audience, and the criteria for making the decision-making, criteria of decision-making, sorry. The arguments must be communicated to an audience clearly and concisely. At the end, the debate itself requires the processing of opposing arguments and then the reformulation and defense of one's original position. The above suggests that the invaluable skills augmented by the debate process include critical thinking, research skills, organization and arrangement, oral communication skills, explanation power, selling power, as well as listening and note-taking skills. The importance of listening should not be understated. Too often we believe that communicating is just about talking, but I believe the ability to listen is of equal, if not of greater importance, in effective communication. Debate involves active listening, which enhances both retention and understanding. 
This is so since debaters learn that arguments are tools and that a critical step in adequately responding is to fully understand and to listen to it. Lastly, but certainly not least, there is a direct correlation between debate skills and leadership. Debaters learn to present a diversity of ideas, to advocate, to defend, and to rationally choose different courses of action based upon the facts and arguments presented. I have intentionally spent the time to expand upon the value of the debate because I believe it is a critical component of a sophisticated, developed, and tolerant society. Too often in Belize we hear stories of violence, injustice, and intolerance, and I often wonder what role did ignorance play in, in the sequence of these events. I am of the firm belief that if healthy debate played a more significant role in our society, our country would be farther along in its development. Improving the skills of critical thinking and active listening alone enhances one's ability to be tolerant and respectful of others. It is for this reason that I will not be wishing today's participants good luck, but rather I will be congratulating them in advance since they are already winners in my view. This, of course, can be said of all the participants of this national debate competition. I must therefore reiterate how proud I am that SSB is taking the lead in this endeavor. We certainly recognize the value of debate and hope that we are planting a seed for what will become a greater part of our national agenda. Not only for the benefits of our young people and future leaders, but also for the benefit of our country. That is why we chose the slogan, Social Security Board, Cultivating and Informed Belize Through Conversations. In closing, I would like to once again thank the moderator, other officials, debaters, and coaches for giving so graciously of their time. However, I would be remiss if I did not mention the many willing and able SSB staff, led by Mrs. Gail Ozieta, who have dedicated countless hours to this SSB initiative. It is important for them to know that their significant contributions are not only recognized, but very much appreciated. I would also like to thank the members of Adlib for partnering with us in this endeavor. We would not have achieved this level of success without their unwavering support and guidance, and for that we are very, very much grateful. Again, thank you for supporting this very worthy event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Richard Flowers, CEO at Social Security. The criminal legalization of marijuana has been a major discussion in many countries, Belize included. The topic at hand today for the persons that will appear on stage shortly, do you believe that marijuana should be legalized in Belize? I call on Mrs. Gail Ozayeta, Mrs. Agnes Flowers. They'll be tasked with the job of introducing to you today's judges and the moderator. Please put your hands together for them. Good morning, everyone. Mrs. Deborah Domingo holds a bachelor's degree in biology education and a master's degree in educational leadership from the University of North Florida. She is an educator who to date has served for 29 years in the education sector. Her career started when she served as a high school, at a high school who taught chemistry at a high school and taught chemistry in the year 1987. She has held several administrative positions, including vice principal of the Anglican Cathedral College from 1994 to 2000. She was the principal of St. Vernon High School from 2000 to 2005, and became the assistant dean at St. John's College Junior College, and in 2006, Dean of the School of Professional Studies of St. John's College Junior College. She served in that capacity for five years. Mrs. Domingo was appointed as General Manager of Anglican Primary Schools in 2011, which is the position she currently holds. Mrs. Domingo's professional involvement includes her appointment to the National Council for Education from 1998 to 2002 and also chaired that body from 2000 to 2002. In the past, she served as secretary 
and vice chair of the Association of Principals of Secondary Schools and vice chair of the Association of Tertiary Level Association of Belize. Mrs. Domingo is currently the chairperson of the Association of General Managers of Pre and Primary Schools in Belize. Mrs. Domingo is also the vice chairperson of the Belize Board of Teacher Education and a commissioner on the Belize Teaching Service. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mrs. Deborah Domingo. <laughs> Senator and Pastor Ashley Anthony Rock is the senior pastor at the Lake Independence Baptist Church for over 24 years. He worked with the Belize Electricity Limited for 21 years before going into full-time ministry. While at the Belize Electricity Limited, he served as president of the Belize Energy Workers Union for 10 years. He also served for almost 12 years as president of the Evangel Credit Union. He is currently the president of the Baptist Association of Belize and senator for the combined church groups. Pastor Rock has also served on various boards. These include the Belize Credit Union League, where he served for 10 years, and the Development Finance Corporation, on which he served for four years. During his tenure as a director on the DFC board, he was successful in acquiring the ICSA Accredited Director Certificate. To date, he is the chairman of the St. Vernon Technical High School and the Stella Maris boards, respectively. His formal education began at the BJSS number one, then he moved on to the Belize Technical College for an additional two years. He held the position of linesman at the Belize Electricity Limited. He also received training with the International Correspondence School, where he obtained highest honors. He attended the Barbados Baptist College, where he pursued an associate's degree in theology in third millennium ministries. Senator Pastor Rock is currently engaged in a master's degree program in theology. Pastor Rock is a trained counselor, and he's a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors. He loves his God, family, and the church to, whom, to which he is called to minister and serving the community dearly. He is married to Mrs. Lisa Rock for over 31 years, and together they have three lovely children, Jamie Lee Rock, Dr. Tamari Rock, and Ashley Rock II. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Pastor Ashley Rock. Ambassador David Gibson is the founder and coordinator of the Center for Strategic Studies, Policy Analysis and Research, CSSPAR, a virtual think tank that conducts public policy research, advocacy and negotiation for governments, NGOs and special clients. CSSPAR has conducted research and advisory work on national security strategy international boundaries, boundary dispute management, maritime affairs, sugarcane industry, petroleum resources management, energy efficiency, and renewable energy strategy, governance, and strategic culture redesign. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in government with honors from the University of the West Indies Mona campus and, an, and a master's in development studies from the International Institute of Social Studies, The Hague, Netherlands. He is trained and experienced in international negotiation and boundary dispute management. He served the government of Belize for 22 years as a permanent secretary in a number of ministries and as financial secretary. In his latter capacity, he served as a member of the Social Security Board of Directors from 1991 to 1993. He was the permanent secretary and the chief executive officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the period 1993 to 2003. He also served as a member of the Belize Guatemala negotiating team. He is accredited as Belize's ambassador, non-resident, to Japan and the Kingdom of Thailand. Mr. Ambassador Gibson, sorry, currently advises the NGO, Friends for Conservation and Development, on science and multiple track diplomatic strategies for its transboundary work with its Guatemalan counterparts. In 2002, he was honored by the government of the Republic of China on Taiwan with the award of the Grand Cross of Diplomacy, conferred on foreign diplomats 
who have rendered distinguished service in promoting peaceful and productive bilateral relations. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador David Gibson. A pleasant good morning to one and all. Honorable Vanessa Rittredge is an attorney at law, having been enrolled to practice law in Belize since 2006. On 11 November 2015, she was appointed as the first female Attorney General of Belize. Immediately prior to her appointment as Attorney General, she practiced law from her private law firm of Reyes Retrige LLP. She brings to her office a high caliber of professionalism and a wealth of experience obtaining a certificate in legal education from the Norman Manley Law School, Kingston, Jamaica, and a bachelor's of law from the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, Jamaica. She also served as a director of the Central Bank of Belize and corporate secretary of Belize Telemedia Limited. Her fervent belief is that we can only maximize our true poten potential through hard work and dedication. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Honorable Vanessa Retreat. It is a great pleasure that I introduce to you this morning Mrs. Julie Ann Ellis Bradley, who is an attorney at law and partner at the law firm of Bradley Ellis and Company. Prior to establishing her own law firm, Mrs. Bradley served as an associate at the full service law firm of Barrow and Williams in Belize City. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Media and Communication and a Bachelor of Law degree from the University of the West Indies. She graduated from the Norman Manley Law School, Jamaica in 2007 and has been called to practice in Jamaica and Belize. Prior to practicing in Belize, she was an associate at the law firm of Nunes Coalfield de Leon and Company in Kingston, Jamaica. She specializes in insurance law and holds a certificate in insurance from the Chartered Insurance Institute of London. Her law practice encompasses corporate, commercial probate, real estate, as well as general civil lit litigation. Julie Ann is a past president of the Kiwanis Club of Belize and also a past president of the Premier Speakers Toastmasters Club. Her qualification and expertise in communication afforded her the opportunity to train and coach the communications team of Social Security Board. Julian Ellis Bradley is also a mediation lecturer in Belize, a mediator on the roster of mediators for the Supreme Court, and sits on the National Mediation Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Julian Ellis Bradley. And now, without any further ado, I call on stage our moderator for today, Dr. Leroy Almendares. Thank you. And as Dr. Almendares takes to the stage, I want to as remind you, as we always do at the start of these debates, if you have your cell phone with you, please either turn them off or turn the ringer off because we need maximum concentration for the debaters on the stage. The first half of this proceeding today is now completed. The remainder of the proceedings and the debate proper is now in the hands of Dr. Leroy Almendares. Good morning, good morning. I wasn't shouting, it's just the probably the thing is too loud, but again, this is what we've been waiting for. There were 10 schools. These are the two finalists. We have had some very interesting topics, and I'm sure that the topic for today 
as Pastor Rock rightly said, and others have said, it is a very important topic indeed. But before we start, can I just ask that the two participating schools for the finals, since you can't come up here, if you could just come and stand, just come up here somewhere. So CCC and EJC. C how you go? CJC, there you go. CJC, CJC, could you just come and stand over here and EJC along with your coaches? No, maybe you could just stand out there so that you don't stand in front of the judges and then you could just stand over here along with your coaches as well. And the whole reason for this audience is for us, before we commence, to go over the rules so that we have a smooth debate, a smooth flowing debate. So what we normally would do in this, at this point in time is to let the coaches know that your coaching has stopped. In other words, all the coaching that you had to do between the 1st of April and the 15th of April should have been enough to prepare them. So, like Odia would say, not a peek out of the judges. Okay? Oh, sorry, out of the coaches. The judges can... Well, not a peek out of the judges right now as well. <laughs> They can pick. Okay, so where are the coaches? Are your coaches here? Oh, they're all dressed alike, that's why. Okay, so, and again, it's just to relax you. Because remember, as we had said before, you're not opponents. We treat each other with respect. It only means that there, will be, there is a topic, and when we choose which part of that topic we will, we will be debating, that's when we decide that. But throughout, throughout, there must be respect. And remember, as we have done in all the previous debates, and you are pros in this, that even if we're speaking, and you hear that bell, can I hear the bell there, timekeeper? When you, not that bell, the one before. So whenever you hear, whenever you hear the bell, it simply means that we should stop talking. Right? We should stop talking because we, res you res we respect each other. So without any further ado then, the three debaters for CJC, could you take, and then the others could just find a seat along with the coaches. The three debaters for EJC, could you just come up? EJC. Very careful. No. You see, you see three debater, you see three people, three students on each side, but only two of them will be speaking. All right. There will be a first speaker and a second speaker. The schools have decided who will be their speakers, their main speakers. So throughout the debate, they are the ones who will be talking. But there's a third person. That person's role is from the whip. And the purpose of the whip is to...
Hello, hello. Is it on? Okay, so we have the whip from EJC and the whip from CJC. Now, what we'll be doing here, both of them were supposed, both schools were supposed to prepare the affirmative and the negative. But it's only after the coin has been tossed will that decision be made. So they don't know. And I have a coin here. It has one head and one tail. So when I, when I throw it up, you're supposed to call. But I want to hear both of you speaking, though. Huh? Head. Sorry. I think both of them call heads. But which, which side? Which, what, what do you want? No, 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 no. Oh, I haven't seen the coin. Oh, I haven't seen head. the coin. You want <laughs> No, no, I, I, no, I haven't spin, I haven't passed the coin because both of you shouted heads. So you want head, you want tail. This is not about who said it first. I'm giving the female the choice to choose. <laughs> you want head, you want, you'll take tail. Wait. Sir. I think it was head. <laughs> okay, let's spin it again. What did we? What did we have? No, we, what? Heads. We had heads. Yes. You okay with the spin? You okay with this thing? It touched her, so no, I'm just be, we just have to be open and <laughs> head, tail. Oh my. It's tail. <laughs> you can find, you can take yours. <laughs> So you can take your seat, uh, EJC and CJC. That's the only, that's, that's, that's the humor part. And now for the seriousness. We have tail was what was shown, and you have decided to... You will be doing the affirmative, you'll be debating the affirmative, you'll, the negative. And as we have done before, and, for the, and just for those in the audience, this is how it goes. You will have opening statements. Opening statements from both colleges. Opening statements, not opening arguments. In other words, there is a topic. And for the benefit of everybody, again, the topic, the criminal legislation of, legislation of marijuana has been a major discussion in many countries. Do you believe that marijuana should be legalized in Belize? Okay, that's the topic. And so you'll have opening statement, opening statement. After that, you will have first argument. The first argument will be again by the affirmative and the negative will have two minutes to prepare a response and two minutes to respond. Whenever the, whenever the response time starts, or it concludes the two minutes, you will hear the bell. It simply means that at the end of that bell, they have, whoever is responding will have two minutes in which to respond. They do not have to take, you do not have to take two minutes. So if you feel that you have exhausted your response, you are free to stop. The judges are there, and, and they will be listening very keenly. Is that understood, CJC, EJC? So we start then, two minutes. The opening statement and introduce yourself as soon as you as soon as you start speaking remember to introduce yourselves <coughs> who's speaking the microphones are not are not working Good morning, one and all. By way of introduction, I am Perla Martinez. With me are my colleagues Harold Woolery and Kenry Eligio. Be it resolved that marijuana should be legalized in Belize. According to medicinenet.com, 
Marijuana is a common street and recreational drug that comes from the marijuana or hemp plant, cannabis sativa. The pharmacologically active ingredient in marijuana is tetrahydrocannabinol or THC. Marijuana is used to heighten perception, affect mood, and relax. According to findlaw.com, the legalization of marijuana means you can't be arrested, ticketed, or convicted for using marijuana if you follow the state laws as to age, place, and amount for consumption. However, you can still get arrested for selling or trafficking marijuana if you aren't following the state laws on licensure and taxation. Alcohol, cigarettes, and marijuana are the three most commonly used recreational substances, and the only difference among them is the legal standing of one. It has long been established that the benefits of marijuana, springing from its multiple uses, including its 400 medical properties, far outnumber and outweigh its non-existent at worst and minuscule at best ill effects. According to the United Nations, approximately 158.8 million people around the world use marijuana, equating to more than 3.8% of the planet's population. This brings us to the point that the legalization of marijuana should no longer be the topic of debate, but rather when it will be legalized and what structure should be put in place to ensure a smooth transition. My colleagues and I will elaborate on the many medicinal and alternative uses of marijuana. We will substantiate how our nation can capitalize on what is a billion dollar industry and justify our belief that the legalization of marijuana can put a halt to making criminals of the common man trying to make a living. Good morning. RCJC debate team consists of Mikhail Gilhari, Ashley Longsworth, and myself, Hannah Lee. Today, we take the standpoint that marijuana should not be legalized in Belize. We will do so by looking at other countries who undertook this perilous act and are now living in the shadows of regret and despair. What, whatever so-called benefits that may be thrown out today could never counterbalance the irreparable damage that could be caused to individuals and our society. Our societies are functioning and successful because we have been able to establish systems and procedures that govern our behavior. Without rules, humans are essentially relegated to beasts. If marijuana would be legalized, we would be opening a Pandora's box, setting loose social evils that could wreck our societies as we know them. Are we willing to take that risk and sink our people and communities into an underworld of drugs ruled by marijuana? Do we not have sufficient faith in our Belizean people's innovation and resilience that we feel the need to resort to selling to drugs? Don't be fooled. Legalization will not mean that there will be a limitation to the use of marijuana. Instead, it will increase its availability, thus satisfying reckless habits that will undoubtedly bring serious harm to individuals, families, and our society. Think of all the dangerous substances that are available and are harmful to our health. We cannot and should not add to the list of drugs already available to our, to our kids. It is our moral obligation. Thank you. And yes, audience, you, you, you can applaud. All that we ask is you don't applaud while they're speaking. But yes, you're free to applaud so that the judges can hear them. So you have heard opening statement, affirmative, and the negative. We will now have the first argument from the affirmative. Remember, as soon as, as, you, as, soon as you hear that bell, it means your two minutes have started. My worthy opponent had made mention of marijuana use inciting violence. But in retrospect, it does not. Marijuana is a stimulant, yes, but it causes relaxation and relieves anxiety. You spoke of traffic accidents increasing to average of two per week, but you failed to substantiate whether or not those accidents were related to or caused by marijuana use. Therein, you had made mention of there being the presence of um, marijuana 
in people's bloodstream and so forth. Yes, it's going to be there because it stays in the bloodstream. But unlike alcohol and tobacco, the effects are not um, in, they do not move to reduce coherence or cognitive function. Um, my opponents also made mention of there being a black market for marijuana. But like every other substance, there will be a black market. It's called a black market for a reason. The black market exists because there is the need for an alternative product. But if we make an initiative to make those alternative products available, then that eliminates some of the black market. Um, we had, my opponents had made mention of the effects on people with Parkinson's disease and from studies conducted by www.lifebook.org, they suggest that it aids in, the, in reducing nerve tensions, causing reduction of the effects of Parkinson's disease. In addition to that, it treats glaucoma, relieves arthritis, and it controls epileptic seizures. Thank you. Okay, so you have heard opening statements by affirmative and negative. You have heard two arguments, a first argument and a second argument, and the responses from, the, from affirmative and negative. We come to that part of the debate that is referred to as an open debate. This is where you don't move away from your position. Remember, you're still affirmative and you're still negative. You're not being negative or affirmative, but you're debating those sides. What this means now is that during this process, you will be allowed to ask each, other's, each other questions. What I would like for you to do, you have seven minutes for this, and we want to make sure that we make the best use of seven minutes. The speeches, the responses were time bound. Now we only have seven minutes, so make sure that your question is precise and your response is precise. No speeches, okay? Now, First question from the affirmative. The negative will have 30 seconds unless they want to respond immediately. And remember, as soon as you're finished with your response, you can ask your question at the end of your response. And the same thing so that the seven minutes will flow. When, that, when the timekeeper press that button, it will mean that the seven minutes are up. Both sides understand? Your first question. My worthy opponents, how many deaths do you know of as a result of marijuana use? Because of marijuana's illegal status, it has impeded scientific research to find a definitive number of how many people have died related to marijuana use. But you cannot say that marijuana is only dangerous if it kills you in one consumption. That is not, that is not logical because there are other chemicals that should, that should be made illegal because a long-term use will be detrimental to health. Let me, let, me, let, me just repeat, let me just repeat something. The questions should be precise. The response should be a response to the question. Okay? So they must also be precise. Remember, no speeches. Your first question. With synthetic THC and CBD available, which are the beneficial chemicals, then doesn't that make legalization unnecessary? Just like any other substance, there will be a generic product to replicate what is the original, but it then leaves you the choice of which you'd like to take, something natural without any chemical enhancement or something manufactured that you run the risk of getting damaged from. You have a question? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
briefly substantiate your claim that marijuana is a gateway drug? You want to ask them a question? No, you ask, you ask them to please substantiate. What's your question? Explain how marijuana can be a gateway drug. How, how is marijuana a gateway Thank drug? You. <laughs> Did you hear the question? Mar marijuana is classified as a gateway drug because like alcohol or coffee, it develops tolerance, which means that your first stick of marijuana may give you a good high, but long-term use ends up finding that that stick of marijuana is no longer enough to give you the same high. So you increase your use of marijuana until a point that you no longer can get the same high from marijuana, so you resort to other drugs like cocaine and heroin. You have a question? Remember, just end, end your response with a question so, so that the pause is not there. Just end your response with a question. And you don't have to ask a question. Remember, you don't really have to, right? Did your study on its harmfulness take into account the 20% increase in potency due to modernization and competition to sell marijuana? Wait, 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 wait. Let me repeat myself one more time. The question has to be specific. Ask them a specific, specific. question and make it as brief as possible. Did your study on its harmfulness, or well, the study you mentioned, take into account the 20% increase in potency? Just like any other legal substance, there is choice as to which you wish to consume and how much. And just like that, there are regulations on what is safe for consumption. So I believe that there will be regulation put in place that tells you how much to consume. And it's your choice if you choose to go above and beyond that or stay within the legal parameters. My worthy opponents, Apart from being the negative and all that, do you honestly believe that marijuana is 100% harmful, as you mentioned? I will tell you the same thing. Your word, your point. Just ask them the short question, man. <laughs> do, do you believe that marijuana is 100% harmful? doesn't have to be a hundred percent harmful for it to be an issue of concern as mentioned earlier we could look at the example we posed on how it can um, cause heart attacks and how much tar it can deposit in the lungs would creating this lucrative industry attack more attract more Guatemalan encroachers who are planting marijuana in the chicken bowl you want to repeat your question? Just repeat your question. Wouldn't creating this lucrative industry attract more Guatemalan encroachers who are currently planting marijuana in the chicken bowl? Let me, let, me just, let me just say something here as the moderator. Within your question, you made a statement that you'd have to verify. All right? So if you want to ask them a question, you have to ask them a question. They can verify something, that, a statement that you've made. Wouldn't marijuana, oh, sorry, wouldn't creating this lucrative industry attract a more, sorry, <laughs> wouldn't creating this lucrative industry attract more Guatemalan encroachers? Do fish draw flies? Yes. But that's why we have our military and our borders. They're there for a reason. So if we're going to implement it, I'd like to think that we're going to have increased border patrols to ensure that nothing like that happens. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's the end of the seven minutes, right? Okay, so that, that ends the, the, the open debate. You listen to the questions, they questioned each other. We are at that point now where we have closing remarks or closing statements. The closing statements, again, remember what were your, their opening statements? This is their closing statements. They should, they should have been prepared. They can, now, they can also reinforce their closing statements after all that has happened prior to closing. And again, we will start with the affirmative. You have three minutes for your closing. After you have finished, you have three minutes negative for your closing. Is there truly a need to condemn a product of God? Marijuana was placed on the earth and has been in use for over 10,000 years and not one single death has ever been recorded. It is not addictive and it is actually far less than caffeine, alcohol and cigarettes. Let us make use of this herb and endeavor in an investment that will indeed be beneficial to our developing nation. Uruguay has done it, North Korea has done it, US states have done it, Canada is fixing to do it, why not Belize? Let us see to it that we develop jobs for the wider and unemployed population of our country. Let us see to it that our younger population who are under the age of 21 be exempted from using the drug recreationally. Let us put proper structures in place to regulate the production, distribution, and use of marijuana. Let us develop this billion dollar industry, mindful of the 400 medicinal benefits of the herb. Keep in mind its use for treating pain, asthma, insomnia, epilepsy, loss of appetite, dementia, and Parkinson's disease, just to name a few. Let us be proactive in the movement towards the legalization of marijuana and try to be wiser in the choices we make for our sovereign nation. Think of the billions of dollars that we need to make in this country to relieve our debt burden. Think of the additional billions in research funding we can access to learn more about marijuana in Belize. It is time for our Belizean children to benefit from taxes and regulation of the marijuana industry rather than it being the hands of criminals untaxed and unaccounted for. Our country's police should stop wasting time and effort enforcing antiquated laws banishing marijuana and instead take those resources and use them on more serious crimes such as murder, abduction, rape, and the list goes on. Why continue clogging our judicial system with a petty crime as marijuana possession? What is the point in filling up an already crowded prison with especially young people just because of a stick of weed? It is a waste of resources with a prison budget already at a staggering $11 million. So my fellow Belizeans, we have established that Belize should legalize marijuana and I must close in the words of famous Jamaican artist Richie Spice. Marijuana pandicana. It keep me clapping, it makes me smarter. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank you. <laughs> Your closing statement. Belizeans, since when do we bend to the will of the reckless? If we as a country mend our laws to cater to every whim and heedless habit the rest of the world indulges in, we will be left with nothing but chaos and regret. We are a young nation that works in an uphill battle in an arena of larger nations that spare little concern in sacrificing their people all under the pretense of possibly earning a few extra dollars. This is not who we are. No, my fellow Belizeans, we are people who would never jeopardize the safety of our citizenry and our society. It is, a, it is truly a shame that legalization pushers are using the sensitive cases of ailments to manipulate us into believing their facade of care. Instead, what is actually being orchestrated is a Trojan's horse of emotional exploitation that only the few unprotected will capitalize on. My fellow Belizean brothers and sisters, if we will not look out for each other, tell me, who will? 
our personal safety matters, and so does the safety of each and every Belizean father, mother, son, and daughter. Do not permit marijuana to turn us, in, turn us into selfish and careless creatures that are more for greed than we are for family and community. If we aren't careful, we will become like the dog in Aesop's fable, who stayed without a bone because of greed. Be assured that legalization will not save money, but simply divert it to regulate the very same self-sufficient sufficient industry it has created. Today you have been shown model cities and think that it will be the same in Belize, but these are just theories. Belize is a third world country, and, attempt, and as tempting as the promises of marijuana legalization may sound, the truth is we lack the ability to regulate such a radical and risky industry which in the end will prove to be a burden instead of a blessing. Despite the colorful figures presented today, we must be realistic because I assure you, there is no pot of gold at the end of that joint. So we have heard we have heard closing we have heard closing arguments. Now, audience, it's your time to participate. So I will just read I will just read the I'll read the topic once again. The criminal legislation of marijuana has been a major discussion in many countries. Do you believe that marijuana should be legalized in Belize? Now here are the rules, audience, for you to participate. It means you can ask a question, and just like I was saying to them, the question must be specific. In other words, audience, don't make speeches to them. Sure. Ask a specific question, and you can decide which of them or both schools can answer. The only other rule is they have debated each other. Audience, don't debate the debaters. <laughs> but before we turn to the audience, let me just ask the panel of judges, if you have any questions for the debaters. I have one question for Ecumenical Junior College. You mentioned in one of your responses a, a, US, a USDA research. Can you provide the more details as to what research you referred to? Um, the USDA is the United States Drug Association, and what they do is they test every product that is out there, whether it be legal or illegal. And so they do lethal dosage testing on drugs in particular. They have tested alcohol, some of the foods we eat, and medicine, and so forth. So what they provide on their website is a list of different substances they have tested, and you select which, the, which is the one you'd like the information for. Okay. So that's how we got that information. Okay, so it isn't a particular research, it's just statistics that's available on the USDA website that you referred to? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, just a question to CJC in talking about the economics of the uh, papaya industry and anticipating a similar result uh, for marijuana industry. Uh, could you clarify how you arrived at that conclusion? Did you hear the question clearly? They, they are asking if you could just... Um... <coughs> no, no, there is a, an, a, in effect an attempt at an economic comparison of the papaya industry, which has virtually gone defunct in northern Belize, and the marijuana industry, that it, it, it's a logical outcome almost that you could expect a similar thing to happen to, the, to marijuana as an industry. The reason that we say that Belize will not be able to sustain an industry like this is because of the del the delicate matter in which marijuana must be cultivated for it to be profitable. It must be cultivated indoors if the industry wishes to see maximum profits. 
And if in Belize, which is, a, which is the sad case, we have trouble um, managing crops that are basically more simple than marijuana, such as cane and the papaya, then we, it, we fail to see how Belize will be able to manage such a delicate industry like marijuana. Uh, question well, to... I, I, let sorry. me just recognize the, the AG. I think I saw Mike on first. Sorry. So I'll just... um, my question is for CJC. In your opening, Mr. Gilhari, I think you mentioned that the government has decriminalized a certain amount of marijuana. Could you state the source of that information for me? There is actually a report um, called the a report on the marijuana legalization in Belize, which is a report that was um, made by Doug Singh, who is in charge of the le le decriminalization committee. And it is in that report that we got um, that we read that we found out that um, 10 grams of Belize of weed, sorry, is decriminalized in Belize, which is technically 10 grams is still illegal. It just means that you will not get up, you will not serve time, and you will not get a um, police record. Uh, in your comment, that is, you, your question is being addressed to, to the CJ, CJSC. In your comment regarding the governor of Colorado, you mentioned that he he sort of denounced the fact that they had legalized marijuana. Do you have any information of how it affected the crime situation? Um, we have two sources, actually, um, one from the New York Academy of Science, Science um, which, is, which stated that more and more criminals are moving into Colorado to exploit um, the drug laws and sell marijuana through the U.S. And line, and line their pockets with money. And then there's also one, it doesn't speak on crime, but it speaks on the safety of traffic, which is from um, a report that said in 2014 there was a 32% increase in marijuana-related traffic deaths, and since 2012, 2010, the number has increased to ni by 92%. Good morning. This question is for EJC. Um, two speakers mentioned a study conducted in Dan Griega, and I didn't hear who um, planned the study, implemented it? What was the scope of it? What are the particulars for the study that, you, that two speakers from this team cited? The study is one we conducted ourselves in doing our research because we thought it would be important to gather public opinion on this. So our research was the issuing of a survey which asked questions about use of marijuana, to what degree it was used and what purposes, um, how often the person would engage in using it and their opinion as to whether or not it should be legalized. Any more questions from the judges? If there are no more questions from the judges, we have 15 minutes audience in which to ask questions. So you raise your hand, there will be a microphone going around. Put down your hands again. There are about a hundred, there about, <laughs> I want to see who was the first, you see. Okay, put up your hands again. Oh, okay, I think at the back, that person had their hand up first. Okay. Remember, it must be a question and uh, Brief question, and you direct it to the, the CJC or EJC.
see the benefits as um, easy Alliance as member, easy. Alliance member, member. Yeah. You're going in your speech. Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> Because of all that you said, they haven't heard the question and you don't have a microphone. I don't know what happened to the microphone. So if you could just get through the microphone, okay. Okay, the, a brief the question. The main question is, what would be the risk for the country to legalize the marijuana? What would be the main risk? The risk that the country would take in legalizing marijuana is that we risk increasing our crime, decreasing traffic safety, and we risk investing a lot of money into an industry that because of Belize's small population may not yield the necessary profits to make it economically sound. And so we will be putting the stability of our economy at, in crisis. In. I see a hand here. I don't know. I see, I see a hand right here. Okay, after you then the person, there's another hand right beside you right there. I have a question for EJC. How will the government ensure that all marijuana producers will pay tax? Quite easy, right? <laughs> um, the laws will be in place. They will have an agency that will regulate. They will ensure that everyone who is selling or producing that they pay a tax unless they'll be summoned to court and um, this, this is similar to alcohol, liquor premises, right? As long as you're selling alcoholic beverages, you must have a license to sell liquor. And there, there are people in place from the liquor licensing board that monitor it. So it's quite easy. There'll be agencies and structures in place to monitor and penalize those who um, offend. There was another hand right near the person who just asked that question. Um, this question is for EJC. No, no, no. The, that hand, his hand was up. Ask your question. This question is for EJC. Um, in your second statement, you stated that there is no carcinogen present in marijuana. However, um, how is this so if a THC is a carcinogen itself? Okay, ask the question now. <laughs> ask your question. You. Uh, you have to be specific so that, because remember, they're thinking on Is the Is THC not a carcinogen itself? Did you hear the question? Is THC not a carcinogen itself? You <laughs> do That's your response? A smile to him? No. <laughs> 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 THC takes on many forms and yes one of them is a carcinogen but that is only under certain um, what's the word I'm looking for it, it's in a conducive environment sorry and so it is important to know that for THC to have an effect on the body it has to bond to the THC the THC already present within the brain itself, so that's how it gets its reaction. But no, it's not a carcinogen in every state, but only in the certain right or conducive environments. Okay, let me, let me, let me ask you his question. Is it yes or no? I think that's what he wants. Is it yes or no? It's a yes and no, but it's okay. only circumstantial. <laughs> Next question. My question is for CJC. Have you come? Audience. My question is for CJC. Have you conducted any local research on the use of marijuana? Use? Just ask your question loud enough so that all. Have you the conducted okay. any local research on the use of marijuana in the Corozal, this in your Toronto? <laughs> do you want a yes or no answer for that one? Okay, yes or no? Just yes or no? Yes, it's just yes or no. That's what they want. No. No. Okay. My question is directed towards the students of Ecumenical Junior College. Um, you repeatedly said that 
uh, marijuana consumption is a choice? If so, then why legalize it if I have the choice to consume or to not consume marijuana? The reason we vouch for legalization is so that those who choose to consume it can do so without fear of repercussion from the law. Just like how alcohol and cigarettes are legal, not everybody drinks and smokes, and burgers are legal, but you don't see everybody running into each other to buy a burger. <laughs> Unless I see a hand way at the back first, and then there's a hand right in the front here. So there's one in the back, one in the front. Or the, those who are holding the mic, you know, you could just give it to, I, I see these, the two hands there. Way at the back there, yes. Um, my question is directed. Way at, way at the back, that's the hand that I saw. Way at the back there. Then, okay, then, then the person in the front, and then you. My question is the CJC, since I didn't understand, is marijuana, the Guatemalans, speaking about the Guatemalans, is marijuana grown inside or outside? Wait, 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 wait. I don't think, I didn't understand the question. I don't know if they did. It, CJ, it's, it's the CJC, you said? Yes. Okay. Your question is? Is marijuana, they had mentioned about it grown inside, and they had in the inception said that about the Guatemalan encroachers. So I'm trying to figure out from them is marijuana grown outside or inside a building? I don't know. I can be humorous here and ask them do you grow marijuana? Do you grow marijuana? No, 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 don't answer that, don't answer that. Don't answer that. I will invalidate the question. I didn't understand it and I don't think that they did. There was a hand in the front here. There was a hand in the front. Can I ask a question of both to answer? Yes, you can ask a question and just then both can okay. answer. Uh, can we consider introducing legal, legalizing marijuana for medicinal purposes only as a start? Why does it have to be all inclusive? Okay, that was two questions, I presume. Okay. You heard the question? You heard the question? You did? You can take 30 seconds to prepare, you know, you don't have to re respond immediately. Unless, are you ready to go? Okay, you go, and then when, when you're finished, then CJC. Yes, as we mentioned in our arguments, um, we fully um, agree that it can be introduced solely for medicinal purposes. As we mentioned in our arguments, there are 400 medicinal benefits. The smoking part of it is recreational. So for medicine, definitely. Is there a hand over here? Okay, yes. She, she. Oh, you? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, you can respond to the question. The fact that there are synthetic versions of the um, beneficial chemicals found in marijuana, which is the THC and the CBD, which have the same effects that they do in marijuana, but come without the risk, such as the carcinogens and the tar, we believe that it would be more recommendable to invest in industries that create the synthetic version that is no different from the natural marijuana than legalizing medical marijuana, which can then still see um, people who will abuse the system. Okay, after you, then the question will go over to... Have you asked your question yet? Oh, it's you now. It's you um, now. My it's, she has been is, waiting. My question is to EJC. Okay. Um, are the results produced in your local research a true representation of the population of Belize, of the country on a whole? 
You heard the question? The research we conducted is applicable to our community, but it's safe to say that from what we see on the news on a regular basis and judging on, judging by how clogged our justice system is with people for the petty crime of possession and trafficking and so forth, and how much of it is destroyed here, it's safe to say that the majority of Belizeans are looking forward to the legalization of marijuana. Okay, so the question is now in the front here, Dr. Sanders, and then at the back. You want me to say your name, sir? The no, go question, ahead. My question is for Corozal Junior College. Um, would you support the decriminalization of marijuana as opposed to legalization? Um... We currently support the decriminalization of what has been established since it would not um, send youths to jail and for them not to, to acquire a prison record. However, decriminalization still has penalties and it still makes marijuana illegal. Therefore, yes, we do support it. Thank you. Thank you. At the back. No, no, you need the microphone. <laughs> or you have your own megaphone. <laughs> Greetings, Billy's students. Um, I have a question. I've been doing research on marijuana for over 40 years, and I went to my Bible, right? And in the Bible, I read Genesis. No, 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 I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. Just ask them a question. Okay, okay, okay. In Genesis chapter 1, Listen to me. God is speaking, and when he get, and it's when he gets to chapter 28, he mentions the word before, which means stop, look. And he said, Behold, I've given you every herb plant and every seed from every tree, and it shall be for food. I want to know, why is marijuana the only herb in the world that's illegal? Amen. <laughs> I will respond and I will just take off a part of your question. Why? Because it's, it was not a religious debate. And before we start quoting parts of the Bible, I know Pastor Rock will bear with me. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor Rock, but am I not right? He starts quoting Genesis, and unless we grab the Bible and prove what he had just said, because that's what research should do. <laughs> Follow you and I will debate when we're finished. Okay, so, but I think the question, though, is question, is question, you both heard this, is, is question at the end. It's not to me, it has to be to, <laughs> the question is, why is marijuana the only herb that is, that is what? That is illegal. You're free to voice, give an opinion on it. You're just free to give an opinion. He wants to know why is it that it's the only herb that's, that's illegal, right? Oh, it's specific to Corozal. Sorry, it's to Corozal. It's not the only herb. There's something called the coca plant from which cocaine is derived from. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it has been, audience, yes, yes, and I can understand your excitement, please, I mean, it's a lot of, indeed. It has been an interesting debate, 
with all seriousness, we know it's a topic, and you see the seriousness with which they took it. But it also shows you, you know, how you can look at certain things, for example, you know, in some parts of the discussion. And I'm sure that this is a discussion that will continue, as they have both indicated. So what I'd like to ask them to do, CJC, if you could come to the front here for me, and EJC, if you could come to the front here for me. Just take your time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a warm, educational, and if you listen to the opening <coughs> of the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Flowers, indeed, because that's one of the things I wanted to prove when I did my own and used the bits, that's what it should do. Listen to the knowledge, the knowledge that was increased, the way they articulated themselves. As he also indicated, they're both winners because their knowledge level has increased. Their levels of thinking have, it, have increased. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your debaters for this morning. Please give them a big round of applause. For them. Could you just now come and take your time, watch there, and just acknowledge each other. Remember, they don't want to take any chance to do that. Could you just come and acknowledge each other? Wait, let me start. Thank you. <laughs> good job, good job. Good job, good job. Good job. Good job. Nice to meet you. Now, it's, it's, it's up to the judges. As soon as the tabulation is finished, the, announce, the, the result will be announced. But again, another round of applause for these brave young people. Thank you. We can all go and meet your school. Thank you very much, Dr. Leroy Almendares. And uh, while the judges are consulting and coming up with the final decisions as to who the winners are, I've been asked to tell you or to announce that starting now, the Belize Social Security Board's scholarship program is open. Applications are being accepted for a scholarship from the Belize Social Security Board. And the scholarships are being offered for high school, sixth form, and VOTEC. Those application forms are available from the Belize Social Security Board's website or from any of the branch offices countrywide. Now, the Belize Social Security Board, if you look to the right-hand side, there are all the prizes, all the trophies that will be handed out to the participants. But for those of you in the audience, there are prizes that you can walk away with right now. And to do that, to give away the prizes, I'm going to call on uh, Inspector Adrian Gonzalez to conduct this part of the proceedings and uh, the prizes that will be handed out. So put your hands together for Adrian Gonzalez. very pleasant good morning everyone thank you all for being here um, supporting characters your supporting staff your supporting all of your supporting teams that are here we at Social Security applaud you and thank you for being here okay I would like to ask one and all to please stand up and acknowledge our contestants with one more round of applause. So please, everyone, up, let us hear it. Everyone. Thank you very much. Contestants, we salute you. You are a very highly intellectual group, and it takes guts to be up here, OK? What we're going to do now is, as part of our social security promotional uh, information, we'd like to have you, the audience, uh, get into a little back and forth discussion with us. It's an informational session. We will be giving you as much information as possible with the help from you, the audience. What we are doing now is what we call the question and answer session. 
I'll give you the opportunity to answer. The persons who answer as accurately as possible will be receiving one of the prizes that we have available. And we start off with a very simple question. People in the audience, please feel free to answer at any time. It's the first one to answer gets the prize. Question number one is, the Social Security Board was established in what year? If we can have the month, the date, and the year. <laughs> yes, ma'am? Come again? That is correct. The Social Security Board, the Social Security Fund, was established in June 1st, 1981. It, what it essentially did was to replace what was, there, what was then known as workers' compensation, which was in line with the Labor Act. When this was implemented, we had the privilege of extending the benefits, not only to the workers, but also to females, um, mothers, babies, and also to the retiring populations in our in our works in our workforce. Okay. Question number two. How does contributing to, to the social security scheme benefit our society? How does contributing to the social security scheme benefit our society? Anyone want to take a shot at this? We're looking, we're looking more into the, into the area of, let me give you a hint, benefits. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Anyone would like to add to that? He mentioned benefits to the retired population. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You have to. You could give them one each. Okay. Essentially, they are on the right path. What we, what social security benefits, how it benefits us, is that, as I mentioned before. We were, only, we were only catering to the working force under the Labor Act, under the work, under the compensation. Uh, by extending the coverage, we essentially started covering babies, the mothers, the people who were sick, who were injured, and eventually we reached to the people who are retiring and also to those survivors of people who have passed while they were working and while they had been contributing to the to the scheme okay so that is how contributing paying your contributions do, doing your due diligence and having ensuring that everyone who you who you have under your employment is getting those contributions paid for okay question number 3 You would, the two people who answered, can you please come to the front? Question number three. What is the importance of the social security card? What is the importance of your social security card?
Hello. Excuse me. Um, isn't it? Can I answer? We're we're having an answer given at the time, sir. If we could get a mic to the front. Um, good morning. Um, as I was saying before, it gives us identity. For example, whenever we are looking for a job, that is one of the first things that we are asked for. And um, I think it's very essential because if you don't have a social security card, then you are not able to get a job. That is correct. Okay. When, when you register with social security, okay, we always ask that when your child is born, you bring, in your, you bring them in, and you go ahead and you do the registration process. What this, what this process does is that it identifies you, it gives you a unique number, which will stay f with you for the rest of your life, okay? That number, as the young lady mentioned, whenever you are seeking employment, what they do is they ask you for a social security card, and that card, that number serves as a, serves as, as I like to say something as a, as a bank account, something similar to a, a bank account. Wherever you go to apply for a job, wherever you work, all the contributions that are made on your behalf will be done with, with that number, okay? So all employment you seek thereafter, all the, all the history that you would, you would want to, to see, you can visit our offices and you ask for, a, for an update. All your previous employers will show up based on the on, on, on contributions paid with regards to that number. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Question number four. This I'd like I'd like to address this to the employers if we have any employers here, and so that you can share this information with these students who are about to seek employment. Okay. And the question the question reads in the following manner. Social security payments are done on a monthly basis. What is the deadline for these payments? What date is the deadline for these payments? And what determines the rate of benefit or the rate of contributions as paid by an employer for their workers? What is the deadline date for the payments? And what determines the rate of contributions paid on behalf of your workers? I have a young lady here at the front. The 14th of the following month for the month, right? Okay, yes. And the insurable earnings determines your rate of contribution. Okay, for the benefit of the students here, here what would insurable earnings refer to? Yes, I'm asking. Your salary. Your salary, exactly, okay? Based on the salary that you earn per week, Social Security has categorized these wages and whatever category you fall into, that determines what rate is being paid for you. Many, many times when we start working, we we would rather they not pay social security for us, but it puts us at a disadvantage. 
if you're earning a hundred dollars a week you might say social security is going to take out a great amount out of that salary it is not so you pay a minimum portion of that contribution and the rest is covered by the employer so whenever you have that opportunity to get employment seek employment please ensure that at all times your contributions are paid for you and that you do a yearly visit to our social security board offices countrywide anyone you can visit and ask them to give you a contribution history to ensure that all your payments are being done whenever you feel that there aren't that your payments are being aren't being done you can ask for a you can request that that this be followed up and for your payments to be done on your behalf okay it is the worker who will be at a disadvantage if these payments aren't done for them awesome. our final question for today what are the requirements for claiming retirement pension? What are the requirements for claiming retirement pension? You first have to be 60 years or older and contributed 500 contributions to the Social Security Board. There is a there is a second there is a second criteria for that as well. Would someone like to take an opportunity at answering that? We have the 60. We have the 60, we have the 500, but there is also something else if anyone would like to share. Okay, at the age of 60, if you decide to retire then, all activities that would gain you an income have to be seized, have to be stopped. Okay, you can't work at 60, you can't re, uh, get your pension and work. Okay, if you are in health, if you have good health and you want to continue working and you can keep on doing it, we urge you, we suggest that you do it up to the age of 65, after which, based on your contributions, you are awarded your pension, it's a monthly pension, and you also have the opportunity to keep on working and you have access to two sources of income, social security pension, as well as working and getting a salary from an employer. Okay, so we would like to thank you all for your time. And Mr. Patrick Jones, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Adrian. We're coming to the point now where we are going to be handing out the prizes. There's a first place prize to be handed out. There's a second place. And then there's a champion debater. Those are some of the prizes that will be handed out in a short while. I want to call on Ms. Marilyn Vanson to join us here. And she is going to perform for us the social security jingle. And I think this is a point where you from the audience can join in and help her to sing as well. Put your hands together for Marilyn. Hello once again. National debate, engage community, they will pay the way for the youth. I believe in the youth, we believe. Cultivating an informed belief through conversation. Bring young minds, no 
Thomas of West Indies for intellectual discussion. Social topics on the forefront, agree to disagree, creating better leaders for our belief. Social security, national debate, engage community, they will pay the way for the youth. I believe in the youth, we believe. Cultivating an informed belief. Bring young minds north, south, west, and east For intellectual discussion Social topics on the forefront Agree to disagree Creating better leaders for our beliefs Social security National debate Engage community They will pave the way for the youth Of belief Thank you guys for having me. This was really fun. And if you look to the right side of the room, there is a video accompanying that uh, jingle that is uh, on the screen on the wall. So let's watch that for a bit. All right, as we continue, we're, as I said, we're moving towards the, the close of the debate. And we also want to acknowledge as well those listening via radio on Love FM and those watching via television on the national channel. While the scores are being tabulated and finalized, I want to call on Senior Communications Officer, Mrs. Gail Ozayeta, and she'll have some words for us. So put your hands together as we welcome Ms. Gale. Pleasant good morning to all. It is a pleasure to stand before you here today in appreciation of your very presence and for being a part of this memorable event. I take this opportunity to share a few words with, which you may deem vital to the future development of our organization. The Social Security Board is currently on the pathway to what is called transformation. And as we journey towards transformation, we must always be seen as, and open quotes, customer focused, close quotes, which is a core theme for the continuing work ahead. This means, open quotes again, that we understand current customer behavior in terms of how they interact with social security, their needs and expectations for service delivery, and gaining easy access to the information and benefits that they need to lead productive lives, close quotes. In essence then, we continue to design pro projects that will aid us to remain on the transformational path that is expected to place the customer at the heart of everything we do. 
the aim is for, open quotes, Social Security Board to listen to people's views, gather information about their perceptions and personal experience of our services, and use that information to further improve the services we offer, close quotes. A significant part of introducing a debate competition was in line with identifying a major activity in which we can engage our communities. From a number of events highlighted, the debate has proven to be the epitome of preeminence and is now classified as our signature event. We have therefore selected this sector of society who are our future leaders to participate in this prestigious competition, thus setting the platform for developing brighter minds. This will no doubt transcend into cultivating a pool of intellectuals that can bring about a positive impact which can also be in integrated in the workplace. With this in mind, on behalf of the Social Security Board of Directors and Management, I extend a heartfelt thank you first to all our participants for once again, for once again, displaying such brilliance on stage and for showcasing your talents. You were all exceptional and the level of maturity and respect displayed throughout the competition will catapult you towards success in all your future endeavors. I salute you. You, were, you have moved through the various phases from challenging yet debatable topics, such as media sensationalism is distorting our reality, technology is destro destroying our social skills, the benefits of the gang suppression unit outweigh the detriments, and be it resolved, that Belize should invest in its military and institute obligatory military service among its young people, given the threats to our borders. And now, to that of today's hotly contested topic, do you believe that marijuana should be legalized in Belize? You have, you have stated your positions, and in some instances, confirmed your position and in a few moments, you will confirm there will be, sorry, in a few more moments, there will be a determination of whether the affirmative or negative position scaled high. You have completed the final round of this competition and now await the results. As you sit back to reflect on how well you have done, be reminded that you are all winners, hence your advancement to this stage. When the results are announced, one team will emerge as victors. I therefore encourage you to be magnanimous in victory and to leave a lasting impression on your peers and your country. To those who may not emerge victorious, do not view the outcome as defeat, but rather as a measure of how far you have come as you continue to strive for excellence. This time around, we are offering a prize to the best debater. I encourage you, whoever that person will be, to accept that gift with gratitude and honor, knowing that there are others out there who wished that they would have been in your shoe. I say thanks to the coaches from both institutions for giving your time so willingly to assist these students in gaining additional knowledge. You have been a tremendous help in partnering with the Social Security Board to cultivate an informed Belize. Special thanks to 
Dr. Charmaine Saunders for inviting the social security communication team to your at lib sessions to discuss with deans of the various tertiary level institutions which assisted us vastly in securing the institution's participation in this competition. Without the participation of these institutions, social security would not have achieved its goals. It has been a pleasure partnering with you. Thanks to Ms. Marilyn Vanson for the wonderful rendition of her national anthem and for also assisting us with the social security jingle and supporting music video. Thanks to Pastor Ashley Rock for your wonderful words of wisdom and encouragement through prayers. Special thanks to our CEO, Mr. Richard Flowers, for providing our audience today with the keynote address and for imparting key messages pertaining to Social Security's new direction throughout the length and breadth of this beautiful jewel of ours. Also, thanks for believing in your staff. To Dr. Leroy Almendares, our able moderator for guiding the debate process to ensure that there is a level playing field and that transparency and equity is displayed throughout. I offer you a huge thank you. To all our judges, I extend a heartfelt thank you for taking on the most difficult task to ensure that the scores were appropriately awarded, particularly when everyone did well. I applaud you for your efforts in this regard. I extend my sincere appreciation to our audit manager, Ms. Denise Mahler, for providing that assurance by selecting a team of auditors to lead as tabulators in these events across the country to ensure that there is both transparency and accuracy while tallying the scores. To, uh, the auditor accompanying her today is Mr. Steven Sanchez, and I thank you. To Ms. Lela Middleton, who was tasked with the responsibility of research verifier to ensure that all information provided in the statements or arguments are factual and that proper and accurate citations were made. I also extend a big thank you to our timekeepers, Ms. Vanetta Williams and Ms. Desiree Daniels. I say thank you for readily accepting to participate and particularly for pressing the buzzer timely. Thanks to Mr. Adrian Gonzalez for leading in the question and answer segment of this program. Thanks to all those who served as ushers, microphone assistants, and many other important roles. Ms. Laura Manzanero, Ms. Ina Guzman, Ms. Angelica Yusso, Mr. David Cordova, Mr. Edgar Galdames, and Mr. Ramsey Dago. To our service delivery managers for allowing your staff to assist. This speaks volumes of your commitment towards service excellence. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. To our entire social security team who continue to support us in this cause, I say a big thank you. Finally, to my communication team, though very small, Ms. Agnes and Adrian, thanks for your support and your assistance. Thanks to everyone. And now I believe it's the moment of truth. The results are in. I want to ask the participants from both teams to come forward in front of the stage right here so that the announcement of the winners will now take place and the prizes will be presented. Just come right to the front and stand side by side to the front.
I want to invite as well to come forward for the presentation of the prizes, the general manager, service management, Mrs. Leticia Vega, and the chief executive officer, Mr. Richard Flowers. Please join us up front for the presentation of the prizes. And the lady with the envelope that carries the names of the winners, please welcome again to the microphone, Mrs. Gail Ozayeta. Thank you, Patrick. And now, as a token of our appreciation for the students' participation, we will award them a small token. As I call your name, please move forward. From Corazal Junior College, Ashley Longsworth. <laughs> Hannah Lee. Damari Tessakun. <laughs> Digna Ramirez. <laughs> and Mikael Gilhari. Their coaches, Miss Elva Perez, <laughs> Joanna Magania, <laughs> from Ecumenical Junior College, Brittany Kerr. Kenroy Elihio Perla Martinez Harold Woolery Karet Anderson and Rosalind Salam. <laughs> Their coach, Miss Ifasina Efuniemi. And now the moment we've been waiting for. And I'll call before I announce <laughs> our second place winners. <laughs> When I call your names, can you move towards those who are presenting the prizes? Ashley Longsworth. Hi. 
Diana Lee. Damari Tessakun. Digna Ramirez and Mikhail Gilhari. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our first place winners, the BAIT Social Security... <laughs> Social Security Board, the BAIT 2016, first place winners, Ecumenical Junior College. Okay, the the prize for the most outstanding debater, Social Security Board's debate 2016 goes to none other than <laughs> Ken Roy Elitia. And now the presentation of the Gold Cup to Ecumenical Junior College. Presentation of the first, first place, um, the gifts for the first place winners, Brittany Kerr. <laughs> Kenroy Elihio. Perla Martinez. <laughs> Harold Woolery.
Karet Anderson. Karet Anderson uh, and Rosalind Salam. I ask you now, Corazal Junior College and Ecumenical Junior College to greet each other with a hug and a handshake. Underneath the table, you have it. Give them one to make we announce. The final gift for this morning is contributed by the Social Security Board to the two institutions. I first call our second place winners, Corazal Junior College, to receive your projector. Ecumenical Junior College. Thank you. And with that, we've come to the end of the Belize Social Security Board's uh, debate competition finals for 2016. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you for those watching on television. Have a good day, everybody, from Social Security.